So uh, for the last couple of weeks, we have covered the basics about Python, uh, from data types to looping, for example, control statements and um, functions and classes. So those are the building blocks of Python programming. And starting from today, we're going to use third-party libraries. And this is where the power of the Python comes, is that you can use the built-in functionality, but there are a lot of things that people build on top of the language to provide a lot more functionality, makes it easy for you to process all kinds of data. And today we want to talk about NumPy and uh, Pandas. Sometimes people call NumPy, whatever you like, um, usually call it NumPy. And um, these are two pretty much the most popular Python packages out there, built on top of like being utilized by tons of other packages. It's being downloaded and installed millions of times. And NumPy represents like numerical Python. Basically, you can do scientific computing. And uh, Pandas is, um, is Pandas. It's doing tabular data, so it's not the animal panda. It's just called Pandas. And uh, one is for doing like array, multi-dimensional array, ND array. Panda is for doing tabular data. And for this lecture, I provided a lot of examples uh, for you to practice. And starting from uh, next lecture, we're going to talk about, for example, GeoPandas. So you can think about Pandas and then have the GeoPandas basically extend the data type to deal with geospatial data. Also, raster IO and X-Array, these are actually built on top of NumPy. So it's doing numerical array. So if you have ever deal with spatial data, right? We have vector data, we have raster data. So vector data pretty much in here is dealing, for example, using GeoPandas to deal with the tabular data, deal with the geometry. Raster data, we're dealing with num image pixels, values. So that's actually represented, for example, by NumPy array. Um, so we have multi-dimensional, one dimension, two dimension, and then uh, three dimension. And if you really can learn these two packages very well, you can do a lot of things and very, very fast. It's very, very powerful. So you're welcome to check out the link here, numpy.org and also um, uh, pandas. And like I said, these two are the most popular Python packages have been you downloaded tons of tons of uh, installed a lot of uh, times. And um, it's pre-installed, I have pre-installed on Google Collab, so we don't need to uh, install anything. Again, you can open this one on Google Collab and then you can start running through that. So I'm gonna open my um, VS Code and we can start going through the examples. Uh, how to create NumPy array and how to um, do some manipulation. So the convention here is usually import NumPy as MP. You can also just use NumPy, import NumPy is fine as well. So you're going to use, see this one very common, import something, add something. Add something basically is just a shortcut, right? For example, you might have your, uh, your name, uh, 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 robot green or something. Your nickname is called Bob. Like Bob represents uh, Robert Green, whatever. Import NumPy is M MP. This is a convention, so most likely you're going to see this one a lot on some of the sample source code. And after that, you can just use MP to represent that package. So here, look at this one. Like very similar in the past, we you use the square brackets to define a list, right? So if you want to create a NumPy array, Basically, you can put the list within the parentheses and then just mp.array and it's going to create, a, this is so-called one-dimensional array. So you're going to see here, 1D array. And if you want, you can do it this with like type and then array. See here, this is called numpy nd. n means um, n-dimensional. So it can be one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional. So basically, it's just a list. Uh, but once you wrap this list as a NumPy array, it provides a lot of functionalities. So you can do a lot of operations. Uh, this is called, basically called vector base. You can, for example, add, an, add a number to all the elements, or you can multiply something. If you're using a traditional list, uh, built-in list, you need to do a for loop, loops through that. But for NumPy, you don't have to. Uh, so we're gonna see the differences between why we use this one. Why don't we use just the traditional Python list? Because it comes with lots of uh, phrase verse that makes it e easier for you to um, do computation. And so similarly, you can create um, two-dimensional array. 
So this one here, look at this, right? Multi uh, brackets. The first one is only only have one square brackets. Right now I have two, right? So this is called two dimensional. So you can see we have two items and three columns. So the output looks like this. So basically it's a list. You can think about this as a matrix, okay? In uh, mathematical uh, 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 statistics. This is just a, a matrix with two rows and three columns. So if you need to figure out, for example, uh, what's the shape? So all the NumPy array has an attribute called shape. So I can show you here a r r two d dog shape, and you're gonna return a tuple. So two, comma three. So that means two rows, three columns. Okay. So the index zero and index one, index two, you might have three dimensional. So the dog shape is to tell you uh, how many items, how many rows, and how many columns uh, in there. So this is two dimensional, but you can also create a three dimensional. This one called MP zeros. That means you can create a matrix with all the zeros, and you can specify how many rows, how many columns do you want, right? So in this case, I I want a matrix with three rows and also three columns, and it's going to return something like this. So similarly, we have this one NP dot ones. So this one is creating uh, a matrix with the values of ones in the. So you basically just have a single. Uh, the same values. So sometimes if you need to create a matrix, rather than having to space it by one, 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 you just MP the ones and you can create something this uh, very, very easily. You can also use the MP dot range. So this is creating a sequence. Uh, the start, uh, the end, and also the step, right? So think about here, zero, and then the zero is the start. 10 is the end and 2 is the step, right? So what it's doing here is creating even numbers starting from 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and this number is excluded, okay? So 10 is not in here. So if you want to include 10, then you need to increase 1. So basically you need to have a step, for example, at uh, the end, for example, 11. Then you can get 10. So similar... Uh, for example, I ask the question, I want to create a NumPy array of an uh, odd number from 1 to uh, 19. What should we be doing here? 1 to 19. 1, 3, 5, 7. Anyone? 1 to 19. Odd number. So MP dot range. What should we be changing here? Eleven to twenty. What else? Two to three. One. Yes. All oh, right. So one to nineteen. One, three, five, seven, nine. So how should we fix it? Is basically your start value instead of being Zero. It should be one, right? And then the step one or two, two. Right, one, three, five, seven, nine. Right. So the step and the end and also the step. So you can change it. So you need to create a sequence. This is how you can um, do that. So next, let's talk about the simple operations. Right. So for example, earlier we created one dimensional array and you can just plus a number. So what still happens, right? So earlier it was one, two, for example, this one here, it was one, two, three, four, five. And so what we did just did is just plus 10. So that array has five numbers. It's just each number uh, multiplied uh, plus 10. So you get like um, 11 all the way to 15. If you don't use this way, like the traditional way would be, for example, nums equal to one, two, three, four, five, right? Um, not good, not this. Okay, so I'm just showing you the traditional way. So one, two, three, four, five. If you want to add 10 to each number in there, 
then you need to do a looping in order to be able to do that. So you can for each numbers in num and then plus ten and then print it out. Or you can do it like this way, square brackets and then uh, num plus ten for num in nums. Make sense? But for numpy, just like this, just add ten because it's going to basically broadcasting to all the numbers. Each number is going to add ten. So this is certainly so much easier than you have to write a for loop. It's not more complicated. And you can have multi-dimensional. You can have like a matrix. You're going to add 10 to the entire matrix for each element. You don't want to write a for loop because you need like multiple loops. So if you're using NumPy, it's so much easier. Just add 10. So simulate it, right? I can multiply. I can divide. You can do all kinds of things. And you can also add the entire uh, another NumPy array, right? So because these two dimensions have two rows and three columns. And we have this one, one, two, three. So it's going to basically add to the first row and also add to the second row. So it's looping through uh, the matrix and then add the numbers uh, element wise. So that you can rather have to go the for loop, uh, it's so much easier. So that's the basic ma uh, mathematical operations. You can also reshape the matrix. So again, look at this one MP dot range. And then um, number to 12. So what does this mean? What is this one doing? MP dot uh, arrange 12. So basically my is by default, the index, if you only provide one number, that means it's the ending number. So that means it start from index zero all the way to what? To 11 or 12? 11. So 12 is not included. So this because it's the ending number, so it's smaller than the ending number. So it's from zero all the way to eleven, and and look at this one here. So in total, how many numbers do we have in here? Twelve, and we apply this reshape function. So basically means that you you have a one dimensional array. We talk reshape to three by four. That mean, means it becomes the matrix. Okay. So look at this. Basically from zero, one, two, three, right? One dimensional, it will reshape into two dimensional. You can change it to whatever dimension you like. For example, I change it to maybe four, uh, four by three. So four rows by three columns. Again, pay attention to how it changed. Right? Uh, you can do it by maybe six two. As long as you can um, multiply by length equal to the total number, then it should work. Okay. Now it's two by six, six by two, whatever you like. So basically, change the shape of the matrix. It's called reshaping uh, the array. You can also do all kinds of mathematical functions um, on the array. So earlier, for example, this is the, uh, we have this. Let me change it back to three and four. So you can see the same number. Okay. So this is the reshaping of the matrix. Looks like this. Zero, one, two, all the way to 11. Three, ro uh, three rows, four columns. And there's a function called mp.sqrt. So sqrt stands for square root. So that means you can provide me the matrix. I'm going to apply the square root function on all the elements. Okay. Again, you don't need to do the looping. It's going to apply to all the elements. And look at this. So we are ending with the same thing, three rows and four columns. And each one is just the square root, right? So 0, the square root of 0 is going to be 0. 1 is going to be 1, right? Uh, square root 2 is 1.41, blah, blah, something, right? So, and uh, if it is 4, that means the square root is 2, right? So you can do it very, very easily. So this can be my UT just, uh, use as just a calculator. Then you can apply things to just uh, all the elements theory. You can also create uh, using the log algorithm, right? So if you need to calculate the log uh, logarithm of each element, you can also use mp dot log or something. So if you want to see what kind of things that numpy array has, mp dot something, and um, you can scroll down. You can see a lot of those functions. Right? Apply arctangent. So some most most common mathematical equations I'm gonna have. So see how many functions this one has. Hundreds, hundreds of functions, right? So you can always scroll down to see what's interesting. 
And some of the common one I already covered, right? Square root, uh, or the shape, or reshape, or you can even create an array or something like that. So that's about uh, mathematical operations. Uh, next one, statistical operations. Uh, if you create some number, you sometimes you need to calculate some statistics. This can also be useful, right? For example, I have an array from one to ten, and you can just use the mp dot mean, mp dot median, mp dot standard deviation. So pretty nice. It's just a shortcut. So think about in the past, like if you just use the traditional list, how do you calculate the mean of the value? You remember, I think we I gave an example earlier, right? So for example here. Without using NumPy array, then you'll be defining, for example, okay, nums equal to this one. Okay, so how do I calculate the mean without using NumPy? I have this list. That's uh, Python has a mean function you can use. I think there's a statistics model or something, but without using any third party libraries, what you need to do is like sum and then nums, right? Divided by what? Come on, how to calculate the mean of all the numbers? So the sum divided by what? Then nums, right? Like this. So for point point five. How do you calculate the standard deviation? How do you calculate the median? Uh, you need to rank all the numbers and then figure out the median. It's just too complicated. But using NumPy, it just doesn't matter. MP dot mean, MP dot median, right? So you see, it's pretty much just like a shortcut. So it's so much easier. And uh, if you're dealing with any mathematical equations or, or things, NumPy is just um, so intuitive to use because you don't need to do all the manual calculation by yourself. I, I hope that, I don't know why Python, in, there yeah, for so many years. Why don't they? Why don't they implement this like the same thing? But, um, but you can always use NumPy too. Okay. Next one: random data generation and also simulation. So, uh, I think in the previous lab we, um, use some of this function called random. So NumPy also has a random function, np dot random, and then, um, you can figure out what kind of distribution you want to use. For example, np dot random dot so there are different types of um, um, uh, distribution, for example, normal distribution, uh, uniform distribution, uh, what else, Poisson distribution. So basically, you're going to generate a lot of points. And you can specify uniform, that means all the values are going to be have equal probability. If I say MP dot normal, all the points are going to follow a normal distribution. They're going to close to the mean. Uh, the more points are going to generate close to the mean. And the far away, the really few points you're gonna get. So this one, we just use the uniform distribution. That means you're gonna get a bunch of points, and they're gonna evenly distribute between negative fifty to uh, fifty. And so we're gonna get, for example, the size is going to be ten. That means you're gonna get ten numbers. And so it's kind of pretty much random. Um, but if you use a, a normal distribution, then it's going to be uh, very very different. So uniform, you can have a, 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 the low and a high. But well, uniform distribution is going to be, for example, what's the mean, what's your standard deviation. So those are more like statistical distributions. So you can figure out what data you want to generate depends on your uh, application. So it's up to you what distribution you're going to use. But NumPy provides those um, things for you to easily generate the uh, distribution. Questions? Okay, so next one, indexing, slicing, and iterating. So indexing, it's very similar to the Python list indexing. So you have a list, we can index the uh, certain elements based on the index. We can do the slicing, basically we can select multiple elements. And um, so again, let's look at this example. So we have uh, one dimensional array and we have five numbers. You can just use the square zero. So start from zero, right? So zero is going to be the first element. Negative one is the which element? When do you use negative one? Start from the end, so the last one, the last element, right? So in this case, the first element, zero, and the last element is negative one. In addition to use negative one, what, what, what other index can we use to get number 50? 
if you don't use negative one. Four, right? So zero, one, two, three, four. So four is the fifth element. And so this is called indexing, is just to get a specific number from the list. And for two dimensional, um, you need to use a, a, a also use indexing, but it's a little bit different. So look at this one, right? We have three rows and three columns. And look at this one. We're going to also do the indexing. So when you have the two dimensional, um, you're going to have a tuple, basically a list inside. So we have two elements. Zero and one, what, what does this mean? So the first one it means row, the second one means column. So what this one is doing here, zero and one. So it means it's row zero and column one. So basically it's the first row and the second column. So look at this one here, what number it is. First row, second column. So you'll be two, right? How about this one? Negative one and negative one. So what does this mean? The last row and the last column, right? So the last row and the last column, then means it's nine. So you can run it. So separate by comma. So right now, if I ask you the question, how do I extract number five from here? What's the number? What's the indexing? A array two dimensional. One. One one. Okay. How do I extract number uh, eight? Number eight. Two one. So third row, two, and um, zero one. So it'll be two, one. Right. So now you understand, right? So you have two index. You can have three dimensional. You can also have four dimensional. Then it becomes very tricky. But one or two, you can see it. But three dimensional, you need to actually visualize that. How to actually extract that one? It becomes. But this is very common. So think about here. Later, when we all deal with geospatial data, you are going to have an imagery. It's a two dimensional. And the image is going to have multi spectral bands. So you have the third dimension, right? So, for example, let's look at the length imagery, right? Two dimensional, and it has 10 spectral bands. That's one imagery. I can have another imagery, it says the time series, then you have for fourth dimension. So, how do I, for example, I give you a tons of images? How do I extract a pixel from that location at that time period? Then you need to go into the indexing. So that's where uh, later we, for example, using X-ray, we can do that easy. But this is why it's important. If you understand the concept in here, then it's easier to transform your knowledge to dealing with geospatial because everything is basically multi-dimensional. There are lots of data out there. They have location, have time, and you put them all together, it's going to be uh, X, Y, Z, and then plus T, okay? So that's two-dimensional. So next, let's talk about slicing. Uh, indexing and slicing. Indexing means just get a specific element. Slicing means you get a slice. So basically, you get multiple elements uh, from the list. So in this example, let's look at the uh, slicing of one dimensional array. Uh, array. So we're going to use the same elements, uh, same array, five numbers in here. And look at this one, indexing. So this is very similar to we. Uh, when we talk about the list, okay, the built-in Python list, right? So separated by colon, so that means the start and the end. So one colon four. What result are we gonna get? So what does this mean? How many elements you gonna return? One, two, three. Four is not included, okay? Four is excluded. You have three elements. So what are those three elements? 20, 30, 40, right? So index start from one, like zero, one. So zero is not included. One, two, three. How about this one? Two and then colon and then nothing else. What does this mean? So what's the result for this one? From that one dimensional array, right? 30, 40, 50, all the way to the end. So if you skip that, that means you're going to take all the way to the end. So the start one is always included, right? Okay. 0, 1, 2. So start from here, take all the way to the end. 
Make sense? If I ask you the question, how do I extract uh, 10, 20, 30? The first three elements. What do you do? Colon? What? Two? Missing one. So two, that means you only have two elements. So if it's three elements, you'll be zero, one, two. So you need actually need three in order to get the first three elements. Make sense? And you can skip the first one, but how about I just want like um, 30 and 40. What index will be using? 30 and 40. Two colon. What? Five or four? Four? So the number of the elements, how many elements in there is the index minus, okay? The end minus the start. So four minus two, that means you get two, so you get two elements. This is what in here. And um by like, you for example, two okay, two to forty, so it, it doesn't throw you the errors. But suppose if this element, this array doesn't have 40 elements, it's gonna get whatever is remaining. So um two to forty is gonna return basically equal to two to colon so this is so-called slicing slicing means get multiple elements so use the colon uh, as the indexing and you can also do multi di uh, two dimensional array for example i have the, an array of like um three rows and three columns and then look at this one they if you start gets confusing and it gets tricky about doing the slicing so look at this one what this one is doing uh looks quite complicated so colon so again Separate by comma, so basically row and column. Okay? And look at this, what this one is doing. What is colon two? What does this mean? So we have three rows, right? So colon to two, what does this mean? First two rows, like okay? zero, one, two is ex excluded, right? So what we're doing here is basically okay, select row zero and row one. Make sense? And the second one here is colon. That means, okay, all the columns are going to be selected. So what is the first one is doing here is select the first two rows. Make sense? How about this one? One colon and then uh, colon two. So what does this mean? One, which is zero, one, yeah, yes, one, two, right? So basically we select the last two rows. And then... Colon two means like column. That means the first and second column. Okay, so the last two rows, and then the first two columns. So you be four, five, seven, eight. So let's take a look. Yes, it can get quite confusing. How about this? How do I extract two, three, five, six? Two, three, five, six. A. Okay. Two, three, five, six. So what does this mean? How many rows in there? We need to select two rows, right? So it be colon two. And how many columns we need to select? Two, three, five, six, right? How many columns in there? What's the start indexing of the column? One? Colon? Yes? So all the way to the end. How do I select number five? Just a number. So what's the, the location of this number in the in the array? One one, right? Second row, second column. So always minus one. I know it's confusing. Like if you have never used programming, zero indexing is so confusing, right? Get used to it. 
0 means the first row, and the second row means the index is 1, and the second column index is also 1, so it will be 1, 1. So this is called slicing or indexing. Uh, that means you get whatever number uh, you want. How do I get uh, 7, 8, 9? Can I? Seven, eight, nine. So what is this? Two, colon, and comma, colon, right? It's all the columns. Nice. So this is how you do the slicing for the multi-dimensional array. And you can also do Boolean. So when we're selecting, when we're selecting the elements, uh, you can also use the so-called Boolean operators to select. So let me show you this one here. Uh, separate this one so that it's easier to understand. Okay. So we are creating a one-dimensional array and uh, 10 to 50. And we can have this condition. Look at this one. Condition equal uh, greater than 25. So what does this mean? We have five elements. So how many elements are greater than 25 in here? How many? Three of them, right? 30, 40, uh, 50. So you can just take a look at this one, this condition. Condix. So what does this mean? So you're going to compare all the numbers. So greater than, equal than, less than. So it's going to return this array with the Boolean values in, the, in there. So force, force, two, 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 right? And then, so see what is one, how do we select the numbers out? It's actually using this one, array the condition. So run this one. Okay. So this is how useful it is to do the selection. Compared to users, uh, we use a, a, a traditional Python list. You need to basically, oh, if the number greater than 25, and then you push into a new list, blah, blah. But for this case, it's basically just one line of code. So look at this one. It will be just array, and then square brackets, then array greater than 25. That's it. See? So it's so much easier. So we can actually select the numbers. How do I select all the numbers less than uh, um, 35? Simple, right? If we just change this one here, less than. 35. Okay, you get number 10, 20, 30. So you can e quickly select basically the outcome based on your condition. So if you're giving some data, you need to select something like this, right? So if you're dealing with geospatial data later, right? I'm going to give you, for example, the household income of every state in the US. And I'm going to ask you which state the median household income is above average. Then you're going to get a bunch of numbers and then you just like, Array greater than mp dot array dot mean. So this case in here, right? How how to select all the numbers that greater than the than the mean? So what's the mean of this one? This array. Did we cover how to calculate the mean earlier? Yes. So it'll be mp dot mean, pretty easy. And then just put in the array there. I don't care how how big it is, right? So Less than the mean, greater than the mean, or less than the median, greater than the median. So I can also do it here, median. Right, it's the same number. So so easy. That just most things you can be, it can be done with just with one line of code. And you can also iterate through the um, the elements, the elements. And this is similar to the Python list, right? For for something in something. So we define an array, and then for each element in the array, you can print it out. Something like this. So we have five elements, you can print out. So you can do the looping. So this is called iteration, iterating through the elements. Uh, it's very much similar to the uh, built-in uh, Python list. You can also iterate through a multi-dimensional array. For one dimensional is easier, you just need one loop. But if you have two dimensional, then you need two for loops. Look at this one here. Uh, one dimensional, if you just loop through the row, if you want to lose through the elements, then you need to roll by column. So 
it gets a little bit more complicated, something like this. So if you look through the elements, look through the rows first. Uh, first row, three columns. Second row, three columns. Third row, three columns. So you can loop through one by one uh, if you want to. So that's about the uh, uh, iteration, iterating through the array. The last one here on the cover is modifying, uh, modifying the array elements. So this one here is similar to all the, to all the indexing and also the slicing. But you can assign new numbers. Basically, you can change the values of a list, right? So again, doing the traditional way would be like this. So let me assign this one to a number equal to, right? So this is just a Python list, 10 to 20. So how do I change the 30? How do I change 30 to 25 using the traditional Python list? Anyone? How do I change 30 to 25? Easy, right? Num, oh, uh, no, no, a pen. A pen, you want to add a new element. So you can modify, basically in place, so you can modify the value directly. So right now I say nums and then square brackets. What's the index of 30 here in this list? Two. Oh, two. And then equal to 25. Right? So now if you print out this again, you see, number has been changed. So list is basically in Python, it's called by reference. That means if you change the value, you're going to change the list directly. Similar here, we are doing the NumPy array, right? We have five numbers, and we change the indexing. For example, this is array index one, that means the second element. So we're going to change it from 20 to 25. You can also do a slicing. So slicing means 0, 1, 2, okay? 2 to 4, it means you're going to change two elements. So basically, 30 and 40, we're going to change 30 and 40 to... 35 and 45. Make sense? And how about this? Would this work? What do you think? Right? I'm going to change the numbers and then 2 to 4, right? Because it's two elements. But I only have a list of 35. What's going to happen? It's just going to change it anyway. It doesn't tell you. So basically, if this sort of the numbers, you're going to use the same number. So you're going to use 35 to place this one change to 35. It's also going to change to 35. So sometimes it can be like unintended. You need to make sure that if you're trying to change multiple values, make sure you provide multiples. Uh, you can provide one. It's going to be used the same value to replace um, those. Okay, questions? Last example, uh, working with uh, geospatial coordinates. And this is pretty common, right? So we have the latitude, we have the longitude, and uh, separate by comma, so we have uh, three coordinates in here. And it's just a list. And you just wrap the list, and then it becomes a NumPy array. Once it becomes a NumPy array, you can do all kinds of calculations. And so that you don't need to write the equations. So specifically for this one, we're going to convert from a uh, degree to a uh, uh, radians. So radian means if we convert from degree to radians, and they can like we have three elements, and for each one I want to convert to something like this. If you don't know how to calculate, um, you can always actually calculate manually by yourself. So, for example, I can just go here and I say degree, just Google it, degree to radian, right? So basically, pi divided by one eighty, right? So this is the degree, and this is the equation how to from degree to um, gradient, right? So one degree is 0.107. You can reverse it. So for example, I can change from a uh, um, gradient to degree, okay? Gradient to degree. So one gradient is equal to, because pi is equal to uh, 3.14, blah, blah, right? So, and one radian equal to 57.29 degree or something like that. So you can come back to see the results in here. And NumPy has that function called radians can easily convert from degree to radian. So if it's 57 point something, then it's going to be one radian. If it's one, one, one four or something, it's almost equal to two radian, right? So look at this one. 
point like uh, uh, 35, right? So basically, it will be 35 divided by <coughs> 57 point something. And look at this number. 6.22, blah, blah. And then this one, negative 1. So negative 1 means it's 10 to the power of negative 1. So that means divided by 10. So this number is basically 0 0.622, blah, 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 something. So if you want to verify that, you can certainly do this way. So I can copy this number. And you can check, see if it is doing it correctly or not. So I'm going to go to maybe uh, degree to radians, right? I can just paste this number in here. 35 equal to 0 0.622899. And double check the number. Is it right? right? So just pay attention to this one. Like minus negative 1 hyphen is actually is, uh, 10 to the power of ne negative 1. So it's 0 0.1. So 6.22 multiplied by 0.1, basically divided by 10. So these are all the numbers. And again, um, this is like in real application, world applications. Sometimes you need to do it this way. You can use the NumPy uh, to do the data processing so much more uh, efficient. And so this is kind of a brief introduction to NumPy. You're always welcome to um, open the NumPy website and then there are tons of documentation in there. But this just give you the basic. How do we create the NumPy array? One dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional. How do we modify the elements? How do we indexing? And how do we reshape the elements? And how do you use some of the functions to calculate some uh, statistics? There are a lot more functions out there, um, but we just cover the basic because most of the time you're doing geospatial, we're going to deal with geospatial data, raster data directly. We don't have to handle explicitly about the NumPy array. So there are other packages that make it easy for us to deal with uh, geospatial data. So this is about numbers. And the next one we're going to cover is called Pandas. So Pandas is, is basically think about the CSV, Excel. It's just dealing with tabular data. And it can be strings, it can be numbers, it can be anything. Uh, it can be variety, but it's just tabular data. So this is called uh, structured data. Similar to NumPy, here with the convention is import pandas as PD. Uh, it's always something like this. And once you have that, you can construct a series. So series basically means it's column. So think about the Excel column. You have the, the, the column header, and then you have a bunch of values. So in this one here, a series, and then you're going to have a list, and the name is called city, and then you can print it out. It might look quite confusing, but think about when you open a swap file in a QGIS or ArcGIS, right? It's, you're going to have the tab, uh, attribute table. So this is basically pandas you use to handle the attribute table. And later when we cover the geo pandas, it's like handling both the geometry and also the, uh, uh, the table. But for this one, pd.doc series. Also, you might need to like see this one here. In pandas, it's called uppercase ace, okay? So, but... Usually, we just use a dictionary, and it uses a dictionary to create a data frame. So this is a more a common way of using the creating the pandas. So look at this one. So now you should understand this one, right? It's a dictionary, and the dictionary has three keys, city, latitude, longitude, and we say three elements. So think about here, like city, three cities, uh, latitude, three values, Long is three values. So basically, it's just a three by three um, matrix. And then you can just pass in the dictionary into the PD doc data frame. So basically, we're going to create this table. Give me the data. I'm going to plug these numbers into the data table. And then I print out the data table. Looks like this. Right? So it's a nice format, but even better, you probably want to use this one. So uh, this is, I think, a space of beginners. You might, if you're using Jupyter Notebook, if you want to print out a data frame, just put the data frame as a variable and then just run it. This one is better than print out something like this. So the difference is, if you go to the website in here, uh, the course website, I can show you why you want to use this, the, the pandas. So let me go in here. All right, so I can print this one out. If you just use the print function and then put it inside somewhere, this is just a, a bunch of text. But if you just directly print out the variable, and you will see this is actually a table. 
So it's the same thing by different representation. And usually, if you work in the notebook, just write out the variable name, just print it. The format will look nicer. And when it's being rendered in Jupyter Notebook, you can actually select this one. So it's better than this one. So that's why, I mean, going forward, you don't see the example, I use the print function. You can just write the variable. You don't need to use the print function. Just write the variable. Next thing. So right now we are constructing a data frame. So it should be PD to data frame, parentheses. Inside is a dictionary. And dictionary has the key. That key is the column name. The value is whatever in here, right? So this one is the column name, cities, right? And then three, three values. And another column. Latitude, three values, longitude, three values. So this is how you can construct. When we're dealing with geospatial data, most of the time we don't need to create this manually. We can just read from a CSV, uh, read from a swap file, read from a geojson. Uh, but you do need to understand how to actually create from a scratch. And one, once you have that, you can do some uh, simple operations. So for example, oh, right now I have this uh, table. How do I select all the uh, longitude? You'll be similar to doing the indexing. So DF uh, is the uh, convention, the name, the variable name for data frame, and then square brackets. Then just give the name, the column name. So latitude, that means you're going to select all the values in that column. Okay, so you're going to select all the values for like latitude. So this one is become a list. You can also do the looping, right? So select the column. So this is basically just like you open the Excel file, you select that column, and then it's copy all the values. But we are doing it using pandas uh, to select the column. Similarly, you can also do some conditions. So this is similar to what we did earlier using NumPy, right? So look at this one. DF longitude less than zero. So what does this mean? Uh, latitude less than zero. So like this is a latitude and all the values are greater than zero. So you're going to basically select all of them and then uh, filter. So this is called filtering. Oh, just two. Or oh, longitude less than zero. So that means it will be this one and this one. All right? So you can do the selection. So DF inside there, this is a Boolean operator. So long DF, long, uh, latitude greater than zero. So you basically select anything. So you can select by basically the, by column values. And this one to select all the coordinates in the Western Hemisphere because it's ne uh, less than. Zero. And you can also do the NumPy array. So for example, DF dot uh, square brackets like you're going to get all the values in that column. And then I'm going to apply a NumPy function on top of all the values. This is why it's 9MP dot radian. So I'm going to convert everything to radian. And the nice thing about this, look at this. If you have if the name of the column doesn't exist, you calculate and then you assign the values to a new column. So what we're doing here, we create a new column. So this is ex exactly the same. When you open Excel, you have column, and then you create a new column, and then you use some equation to calculate. So you create a new column. In Pandas, it's just like give an equation, assign that one, and then you're going to create something like this. And if the name already exists, you're going to overwrite. Make sense? So for example here, right now I'm doing this way. I can also add a number at the end, for example. I can say add 10. So pay attention to this one. See the number? So you can overwrite uh, the stuff. You can also do it like this way. So what will happen? How many columns are going to output from this table? It's still three, but uh, if you go back to the previous one, then uh, you will not have that new column. So for example, you do it from here then this column will not show up because I didn't do that. So you can overwrite. This one right now, for example, the latitude, I add 10 to all the latitude. So again, DF dot square brackets, the name of the column. If the column name doesn't exist, you will create a new column. If the column name already exists, you will overwrite that column. So you need to be careful uh, what you want to do with the column. So right now, this is just a simple, a basic uh, operation. Create a data frame, and then you can start doing some operations. The next one here, similarly, 
Okay, so we create another data frame. Three keys, basically three columns, and host all the values: city, country, population, blah blah. And then we have this table. Right, it should be very familiar, right? You can encounter this using any CSV or Excel file. The nice thing about this is that we can do some statistics very very easily. So without using pandas, you probably go to Excel and then open this one and then maybe just equal sum and then just trying to calculate. But in pandas, you can do it pretty easily. So look at this one. Um, we have the city, we have a country, we have population. I want you to group the total population by country. Right, so how many countries in here? Unique countries. So USA appeared twice. So if you need to do the grouping, you need to add this one with this one, right? So in pandas, they have the group by function, uh, pretty unique. DF dot group by country, and then select all the population, and then just sum up, and then you print it out. So look at this. One line of code, and now we have this one USA. You see, it sum up these two numbers. It's a single one. So DF dot group. So you can see group by a certain column. Uh, if that column is categorical data, and then you can put them all together. So for example, here I can uh, put all of you in a table, and then I can say it's measure, okay? Geography measure, non geography, geography, non geography, and get all your final grade, later grade, uh, grade, and I can quickly group by figuring out, okay, what's the average score for geography major students? What's the average score for non geography majors? Right? And you see here just one line of code. But if you not using programming, if you give a huge Excel file and then ask you to do grouping, you probably did like Google search like how to do that. But in pandas is like group by. Group by this column, group by the major. And then calculate the sum, calculate the median, calculate the mean. Same, right? So for example, here I can do the mean. Uh, don't mean what is well. You can see the mean population. I can calculate the standard deviation, calculate the sum, whatever you like. So it's very, very easy um, to do. Next one, uh, merging data frames. Uh, this is also very common, uh, especially when you're dealing with geospatial data. You might have one table, one swap file from somewhere. You have the other one, and sometimes you have to merge those two together. Uh, we talk about this when we deal with uh, geo, geo data frame, but for now, let's look at these two tables, right? The, Data frame one and data frame two. So what's the common columns between these two tables? City, right? We have the name of the city and then the country and also the population. So how do we join these two tables together as a single table? In pandas, there's a function called pd.moves. And then you can provide two data frame, one and two. On means the key, the primary key you want to join the two table. So this one here is called on equal to city. So that means, okay, we're gonna use the city to join these two table. And look at this, so easy, right? One line of code. Again, if I use Excel, uh, good luck. Because you need to figure out, you need to sort the columns. And also sometimes there might be some data that don't appear on the first table or some of the uh, cities don't appear on the second table, but how do you deal with that? Uh, in pandas, it's pretty easy. Just figure out what key you're going to use, and then you join it together, and become a new table. So you automatically deal with the key, and the order doesn't matter. So you can think about here, like, I can have Tokyo in the last row, Los Angeles in the first row, it doesn't matter. It's going to figure out and match it together. And so just use the PD dot first, then you can merge these two together. And this can also be applicable to geospatial data. So it's very common, you're going to have two geospatial, two vector data from different places. And so in ArcGIS or QGIS, right? You right click and then you say join table, and then you select the table, and then you select the key. But in programming, it's one line. So you don't need to know how to, don't need to click the interface. Everything can be automated. And you can write a loop, right? So think about you're trying to process data for each individual state. Uh, each individual county, there's thousands of files. Just do a looping, and then just do the most two lines of code. Done. You use the software, desktop. Uh, good luck to opening and then closing and then saving the file. It's going to take you a while to 
So this is the power of doing like automation. So this is about um, creating data, but like I said, most of the time we don't create data manually. We just read data from some CSV. So this is very common operations. And again, I really want you to understand this function because you're going to use it somehow. For example, I have a CSV file represent all the cities. So I have this file on GitHub. All we need to do is just use the Python p, uh, pandas pd.readcsv and then just pass in the URL. So this URL can be a HTTP URL or it can be a local file pass, okay? So you can also provide the file pass locally. And then, look at this. It's going to read the file, download the file, and then print out the file. Also, I use the df.hate. df.hate means like you are reading the file, but sometimes it might be too many. Uh, you just want to show that like, look at the first five. So dog head means just show the first five rows. If I don't do it this way, you'll be like this. You just print out DF and you're gonna print out the first five, the last five, and then also gonna show you how many rows, how many columns you have, right? So you have a CSV from the internet, and you know, print out, show you the first five, last five. So we have six columns and then 1249 uh, 49 rows, right? And Sometimes if it's just too much, you just use dog hate to show you. So at least you can see the data structure, right? What, how many rows, and then <clears throat> what's the name of the columns? So look at this. And the dog hate by default is five, but if you want to show, for example, I want to show the uh, first ten, then you just dog hate ten. Uh, it's going to show you um, first ten rows. Also, you can do it like this. So once you have the the data frame, you can use df doc columns to show you all the names of the columns. So this one to show you, okay, ID, name, country, latitude, longitude, population, uh, blah, blah, something like that. And so this is exactly the same. You're opening a, a, a CSV file, right? So you, how do you add this one to uh, QGS, ArcGIS, right? Open XXY data, you select the two columns. So we're going to talk about this uh, in the next lecture, but for now, uh, we are just treating it as a tabular data, non-geospatial. So you have a file, read doc CSV, that's it. And then you have the data. Then we can start manipulating, we can start figuring it out, like can do a calculation. So for example here, I want to, I want to calculate the total population, right, of this column. Now, do you know how to do that? Earlier, we used the group by, right? Group by, and then we can group by population. But right now, if you just want to calculate the total population, it should be pretty easy, right? DF, and then square brackets, and then population. You see, it's pretty intelligent. So I'm going to show you here. And this is going to get you all the numbers. And this one being returned basically is just like a NumPy array. You can should be just apply the doc sum. See? So, um, yeah, like 1.4 billion, something like that. Three, three, yeah, 1.4 billion, right? So all the cities, take the total population. And you can certainly also group by, right? Group by country. For example, these are all the cities in different countries. Like what we did earlier, right? So DF dot group by. And by country, oh, so intelligent. Dot mean, maybe dot sum uh, make more sense, right? See how quick it is, right? Group by country, then you do this. Imagine if you don't use coding, if I give you this table, I give you an Excel file, and group by, it's gonna take you maybe some time to pick out the equation, how to do the group by. Uh, Excel probably have some like equation, but uh, if you use the pandas, it's so easier. Like this column, group by this column, by this category, get all the numbers, and then you can even do the sorting. So by example, after you do the, uh, I'm not sure if you can sort values. Even better, right? I can just sort sort the values and then ascending equal to false. That means it's descending. So look at this one, right? All the numbers, like population, China, USA, India. And this is outdated, okay? It's so not like most recent data, but see how easy it is. So this compared to Excel file, you want to calculate and then you want to click sort the column, sort by values. But everything can be do programmatically and so much faster. Uh, you can change this one, for example, to two. I'm going to check something like that. And lastly, we're going to quickly talk about uh, plotting. So you can actually 
um, create plot. So this uh, on a package is called map plot lift. We don't have time, time to cover specifically, but it's being used by all the packages. So similarly, we're going to read a file from uh, the internet. And then the difference we're adding here is that we're going to use the read CSV, but we're going to pass the date to true. That means if your data has some date, it's going to convert the data type. So right now, if you look at this one here, this is being converted to the so-called date time. The reason we want to do that is when we do the plotting, you're going to use the date as the x x axis. So right now, right, this is the data, and I don't know how many rows, how many columns, but this is data set that contains data uh, uh, air quality of three stations: one in uh, Paris, London, and uh, what's this one? And and warp. I don't know where it is. So these three stations, and with the date, look at this. Just one single function. So this is the data frame, and it's just called the dot plot function. And it's going to create a plot based on map plot lead. Uh, okay, this is probably the first time it's using it. It might take a couple seconds building the case. But after that, you should be able to see the plot. Uh, I think you can be coming. Cool. How nice. So we have three columns, right? Three stations. And this is where you see the x axis here. This is coming from this one. If you don't use the past day equal to two, then it's going to look different. So, for example, if you have this one to force, and you can run again, read the data, that means right now this column is not date, it's just a string. It's not treating as date. And if you use this plot, It's just treating as a string, so it's not like intelligent. So if you if your data have the, the date, when you read the data, you want to turn this one to choose. Because by default it is uh it is not true. So um that's why you want to turn this one on. And so you have three columns, it's gonna get you three lines, and you also have a table like thing. This is similar to Excel, right? You have select three columns, you create a chart, and then you can start manipulating, but in Python, everything can be done automatically, and you can change the color and everything. Uh, this is just using the default. If it's just interesting, it's just a specific column. For example, I just want the a station data for Paris. Then it's just data frame, right? So air quality is the data frame, and then select a column, and then just do the plotting, and just um, <coughs> select one. You can also create like scatter plot. For example, scatter plot means you have X and Y, so you can compare two stations. So the first one, the x-axis, is the stations in London. The second one is the stations in Paris. And the alpha, alpha means the opacity. So alpha point, the point one five is, oh, that's why you see kind of half transparent, uh, because you have alpha. Otherwise, you'll be just zero. So for example, it's just put to one. That means there's a, a dot uh, point without transparency. So see how easy it is. Dot plot. You, <coughs> you're going to use to create a line plot. If you dot plot, dot scatter, it's going to create a scatter plot. So uh, one line of code. And the last one here, you can even create, for example, area, area plot, and um, sub plot equal to two. So you're going to create three of those, each individual one. Again, like three stations, and you can create the area plot, something like this. And pretty cool, right? One line of code, you can create a plot. You can change the size. If you want, you can download this one as a JPEG. Uh, you can also copy this one, put into your um, report or something like that. And so this is might be something that you want to use, right? Rather than using Excel and then copy, paste, you can join all these plots uh, programmatically. Okay, so that's about uh, pandas plotting. And the last example um, I want to give you as an exercise is to, for example, uh, calculate the great circle distance, just like what we talked about uh, in the previous lecture, right? So you have some data, and they have latitude, longitude, you want to calculate the great circle distance for all of them, right? So this is basically a, a pandas data frame. You can apply the function <coughs> on the data frame. Uh, this is certainly a little bit more complicated, but this is a NumPy function, and they provide the input. And the last example here, look at this one. This, and so you can actually create this function. You see this one here? It can be a number. And if you put a NumPy array for this one, basically it's just a list, the whole column. The, all the latitude one, latitude two, uh, longitude, latitude two, and just look at this last column. 
So basically, you just calculate the distance for the entire data frame by applying the function on this each row, and it calculates automatically. So basically, just one line of code. You can calculate things based on whatever value you're providing here. It's a little bit more complicated, but uh, takes some time to digest it. And the last example is calculate, for example, the average distance. For example, in here, uh, you have three cities, and you will calculate the distance to uh, the average distance of all the cities. Uh, you can also do that as well. But basically, you can combine NumPy and uh, Pandas all together to a lot of things. Okay, so we're out of time, but today I just give you the brief introduction to dealing with NumPy array, multi-dimension, and tabular data. So in the next lecture, I'm going to talk about GeoPandas. It's like, how do we deal with tabular data, but also with geometry, with shape file, with geosation, and how do you actually handle those data? Uh, so we're going to start real geospatial stuff in the next lecture. Okay, so that's all for today. I will see you uh, in the next lecture.